Eric Gustafson? At least Ovechkin didn't score. Eric Gustafson? At least Ovechkin didn't score twice. Eric Gustafson! At least Obey Kubel didn't score. Now there is that. Eric Gustafson! Let's go! Give me what I want! Kick down the door! Drew, you are not doing this! What the <laughs> not nice! There's a giant head! <laughs> you hear yourself! I made like 2,000 of these. I'd like to have fun. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFO. A losing streak? What? Who do you think you are? When I ordered these wins online and I selected quantity, I specifically put 82. And I already hear you smart Alex out there, what about the playoffs? Well, I did the calculations and that still leaves 66 regular season wins and 16 to win a cup. And you can't even, you can't even do that. Why do we even watch, man? Like, come on. What the frick, man? The, what the frick? I think there's room for a couple things here. Number one, you're not gonna win every game, and number two, that was the Leafs' worst game in a long time. Let's talk about it. But first, think you know which way it's gonna go? Like for example, a guy who hasn't scored in 31 games, a defenseman who hasn't scored in 31 games, he's gonna get a hat trick! Well good for you, make your bet at Sports Interaction, I guess. When the puck drops, Sports Interaction has you covered pre-game, live betting on all major sports and prop bets. Wanna bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn, that's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn, 19 plus. Please play responsibly. A hat trick! You know what? I, I think people were being disrespectful about this because despite the fact that it was a very surprising hat trick, too many people were like, who is Eric Gustafson? Dude, he's been at this for a while. Fourth round pick of the Edmonton Oilers from 2012 and he never played a game for the Edmonton Oilers. That's how you know he's good. Made his NHL debut during the 2015-16 season for the Chicago Blackhawks and he has been exclusively in the NHL since 2017-18. He's never played in any other league since then. Played for the Blackhawks, Flames, Flyers, Habs, d d d mm -hmm. during the... He played 16 games for them in the playoffs that year, I know that much! He played for the Blackhawks again last year, and now he's back in Montreal. Now the last time he scored more than one goal in the season was pre-pandemic, the 2019-20 season. Which is weird, because the season before that, he had, and this is gonna blow your mind, 17 goals and 60 points with the Blackhawks. Look it up! Eric Gustafson, as a defenseman, once had 17 goals. This is the person who had no goals coming in tonight, and everyone's like, who the hell is this person? Yeah, I'm sorry, you couldn't have seen the hat trick goal, that laser beam that came off his stick, and been like, is that the first time he's done that? No! He just forgot how to do it for a while, and tonight of all nights he remembered. But I gotta be honest, the Leafs, who have been an unbelievably structured, and calm, and poised, and, and defensive team, over the last four, five, six weeks as they've been on this unbelievable heater on their way to the top of the NHL standings. They were shambolic tonight, man. During the stream on Sportsnet's YouTube channel, I said that it looks like the Leafs are getting more scoring chances than the Washington Capitals, but they're giving up the worse scoring chances. Partway through the third, producer Rob confirmed that the Leafs were out chancing the Washington Capitals, but in terms of high danger chances, the Capitals were out chancing the Leafs. Ilya Samsonov, the story with him over the last little bit is he has the highest save percentage in the NHL, and coming into this game, he had the second highest save percentage in the NHL behind Keith Kincaid, who only played one game, so we don't pay attention to him. In terms of goalies who have played 10 or more games, it's Samsonov. There's a stat that was true going into this game, and it's true coming out of this game, and I'll give you the, the preamble to it. The Leafs have won Every single game Ilya Samsonov has played where he only allowed two or fewer goals. The number of games where Samsonov didn't allow two or fewer goals is two. The Leafs lost both games where he allowed two or more goals and the Leafs won every single game where he allowed two or fewer. Now in this one, he allowed more than two, so you know they're gonna lose. I wouldn't consider myself much of a stats guy, but that stat strikes me as something that is not the goalie's fault. And while this one was not Simsonov's best game, I want people to not latch onto that narrative too tightly, because no, this wasn't Samsonov's best game, but I thought it was brought about by the poor teamwork in front of him. Here's the one nothing goal, and it's nothing out of the ordinary. Eric Gustafson rushes in from the point, and we all watched him rush in from the point at home, and the Leafs all watched him rush in from the point 
all in person. Look at this. Look at this. Nothing. Not a thing. You can look at this and go, ah, Samsonov should have had it. And you know what? He should have had it. Okay, it's just, uh, it was a rebound that got chopped in and maybe should have been tighter on the post. Barely goes in, but it goes in. The shot should have never happened. The, the rebound definitely should have never happened. That's not even a scoring chance. But the Leafs, who have been so much better at rebound prevention and clearing rebounds and just harder to play against in front of their own net, baby soft, awful in this one. And it's one nothing caps. And the usual suspects get the Leafs out of trouble, okay? They don't look very good. Matthews to Nylander, and guess what? It's 1-1. One, one. Just like that. Just like that. One thing the Leafs have been great at over the streak is being the better team. But also, when they're not the better team, on the rare nights where they're not the better team, they find ways to win anyway. And look at them go! Before the period ends, oh, oh, Elia should have had that one too! Except it's a knuckler from Trevor Van Riemsdyk that goes directly off Mark Giordano's stick. And Simsonov gets a part of it, and he doesn't get all of it. And the deflection was far enough away from the net that maybe you like him to have that but it's 2-1 after 1. Okay, get him back in the second. Early in the second. You gotta wonder if there was any conversation of, all right, the cap scored two on us in that period and both goals came from defensemen. We're gonna chalk the one goal up as a fluke. That went off Giordano's stick. We don't worry about that too much. The other one, they activated and they rushed in and we weren't ready for it. And in the second period, we gotta be ready for it. Well, on the 3-1 goal, everyone was dazzled by Evgeny Kuznetsov pass and it was a great pass, but look at this! Look at, look at the path that Kuznetsov has to pass this thing to Gustafsson. Moses didn't have a path this wide. Look at that. You show me a great pass and I'll show you someone who should have been in the way of it. Gustafsson, completely open, again, makes it 3-1. Now after that, something great happened. The Leafs played the next 17 minutes of the game and utterly, utterly dominated the Caps. Connor Timmins continues his torrid streak with his six point in six games, finds Austin Matthews, Matthews chops at it, and ah, it's not even a dangerous looking shot and it's a snipe past Charlie Lindgren. And once again, the Leafs not looking like the better team overall in the game, but now they're within one. And not only are they within one now, they look like the better team. They weren't the better team, but going forward, they're gonna be the better team. And it's still only 3-2. Lindgren makes a few big saves, but it's only 3-2 heading into the third. That second period gave you a lot to build off of, and 10 seconds in to the third period, the Leafs form a prayer circle around Garnet Hathaway, and they pray that he doesn't score. Soft, soft, way too easy, way too soft. They haven't looked like this in a while. That's why I'm ranting about it, it's so, uncharacteristic based off what they've given us in terms of expectation. And like you have 19 minutes and 50 seconds to score two goals, the Leafs can do that, but like mentally that goal is a killer. The 5-2 goal happens about three minutes later and there's a couple things. Listen, I know the guy didn't have any goals heading into this game, but he's got two already tonight! Can someone figure out who Eric Gustafson is? You know who's probably not gonna figure out who Eric Gustafson is? Dennis Melgan, who has his back completely turned to him. Holy boy. He had a goal post and not much else in this game. That second line did not have a great night and they were out for two Eric Gustafson goals alone. 5-2, it's done. There was another guy who had a particularly bad night and I thought that was Rasmus Sandin. And someone asked me about that during the stream and it reminded me of something. Maybe Eric Gustafson is what reminded me of this. Do you remember that series? Do you remember how it went? The, don't just say the Leafs were up 3-1. No, no the, there was something to get to the 3-1. Obviously game one happened, it was very emotional and the Montreal Canadiens came out with the win. Uh, Leafs uh, got a dominant win in game two. And they eked out a win in game three. And Rasmus Sandin was a positive part of the Leafs eking out that win in game three. Now in game four, Sheldon Keefe did something really confusing. He took Rasmus Sandin out of the lineup and he put Travis Dermott in. And some people were like, I, I don't know about that one there, Sheldon. The Leafs proceed to turn out a defensive work of art where they beat the Habs for nothing. Then in game five, he did something perhaps even stranger. 
He went with a different lineup than the one he had in game four. Sandine gets inserted back into the lineup and he's a different player. He has a terrible game. He's a large reason for why the Montreal Canadiens had a 3-0 lead in the first place. And that's it. Well, I know it's definitely not that's it, but that... Mm, Mm. That's how they got down big before the comeback and then choking in overtime. I think we've seen enough of Rasmus Sandin in his career that we know he has highs and lows. He started low. He had a nasty negotiation or a negotiation that probably didn't go the way he thought it was going to go. He was playing so poorly at the beginning of the season that there was a really good argument to healthy scratch him. In fact, I think I was calling for it. Then Riley and Brody and Muzzin and, and the Tin Man too, everyone gets injured and Sandine is all of a sudden in a really important part of the lineup and not playing on the right side. That's enough, Sheldon. We, we don't need to see that anymore. Sandine belongs on the left where he plays his best hockey and they put him with Lilligren with whom he plays his best hockey. He has looked great, but the power play has faltered a little bit recently. So in morning skate, they said the Leafs are going to try five forwards on the power play. Now the Leafs do four forwards in overtime and they've scored at least three overtime winners off the top of my head. It works. It works. Well, that's four on three. The Leafs are essentially taking their big four forwards, Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, Marner, and adding Bunting, a guy who's on a 10 game point streak at the time, to this. Feels like it should work and it was mixed results. The first power play wasn't so great. The second one, they came pretty close a few times. But Sandine was taken off the power play the place where he gets his cookies in order to try this little experiment. And I have a hard time believing that Sandine having his worst game in about a month coupled with this power play experiment are not related. I think he was rattled a bit by it and it resulted in him not having a great game. Listen, the vibes have been immaculate with this team for a long time and tonight... They were off. They were definitely off. I think you can chalk up the Rangers loss to you're going to lose tight games sometimes. This one was a little worrying and I wonder if they try something new for next game. Most notably, are we done with the Malkin on this second line thing? I know I said Malkin. I'm not going back. If he were playing like Malkin, they might leave him there. But it's Malkin and he's... I don't know. There was one rush where like... He uses all the speed and he gains the blue line and he gets picked off immediately. There's another one where it's like Tavares uses like brute strength to get through a board battle and Marner uses his craftiness to get through a board battle and there's Malgan who gets smushed like a bug and I just don't, I don't think it's a fit. Questions. Is it just me or Murray looks more comfortable in the net compared to Ilya Simsonov? I don't think so. I know what you're talking about stylistically. Murray is far more, he, he honestly kind of looks like Optimus Prime. He definitely looks like a transformer of some sort. Whereas Simsonov is a little squirrely and moves around a lot more. And I feel like Simsonov plays like a lot of Russian goaltenders roughly his age. They're athletic and they move around a lot. He didn't look overly confident today. I think today was just an off day. How's the Christmas shopping going? Don't remind me! You know what, here's the problem. I left it too late and then I broke my nose. And then I got sick. The problem with leaving things late is then what if a variable happens? I was just having a good time and everything's fine and my dog said variable! And then the sink was full of variables, covered in variables sitting in the ER. Doctors injecting variables into my nostrils and then injecting another variable and moving this variable anyway uh, it's not it's not going well how's the nose we've been through this it's it's improving when was the last time you remember the leafs allowing a defenseman to score a hat trick against them seems rare but knowing the leafs you'll remember something i didn't you know it's funny and i'm kind of ashamed i think i do remember the last time the leafs allowed a hat trick from a defenseman but there's an asterisk attached i'm almost positive it was the COVID shortened season. I think it was before COVID. I think it was the 1920 season. I think it was against the Florida Panthers. And I think it was Mark Pissick who scored it. The asterisk on it is Mark Pissick was playing as a forward in this game. The Leafs allowed a hat trick from a defenseman who was playing as a forward. You know what, now I gotta look it up. February 3rd, 2020. Wow, this was really close to the pandemic and really close to the David Ayers game, only 17 days away. Mark Pissick's 
first career hat trick leads Panthers to win over Leafs. So just like Gustafson, it was Pissick's first career hat trick too. Fun! Should Ovechkin be concerned that Eric Gustafson will beat him to 895 goals? Well, that depends. How many times does he play the Leafs? From Kristen Shilton, Washington's next game is against Detroit. Something poetic about Alex Ovechkin matching slash breaking Gordy Howe's mark against the team Howe'd play with for a quarter century, no? Ah, uh, here's the thing. That is a tremendous hockey story. It's a really good one. Ovechkin scored his 800th goal the other day. That was friggin' amazing. Um, I started this YouTube channel in 2007, so the 07 08 season. Ovechkin was beginning his third year in his career. Uh, when I started this YouTube channel. There's a reason I talk with such reverence about Alexander Ovechkin and about Sidney Crosby. It's not just their greatness in hockey, it's they've been great the entire time. And I've gotten to watch their careers the entire time and I've covered them for almost the entire time. I've got to make videos about them winning Stanley Cups. And Alexander Ovechkin has been a history-making goal scorer basically since I started this YouTube channel. And now that he's on the precipice of all these records and he's gonna pass Gordy, how for goodness sake, only one person has ever done that and his name is the Great One. And I'm sorry, but there's an elephant in the room. Oh, Steve, why are you bringing this up? Dude, I'm not bringing it up. Listen, Ovechkin has been celebrating his 800th goal and his milestones and you see it on his Instagram story and every time his Instagram story pops up on Instagram, you see Alexander Ovechkin posing for his profile picture with the elephant. Bless Chris Johnston for talking about this on the Chris Johnston show. Yes, that is on STPN. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows and for good reason. CJ is unreal. Like the show starts with him talking about how he spoke to a minority owner for the Washington Capitals who said he listens to the show. Followed by CJ talking about how this record-breaking run of Ovechkin is kind of tarnished by all of this. And it's not fun, and it's really hard, and it's not because the Leafs lost. Stop. The Leafs have lost lots of games to Alexander Ovechkin in my time doing these. Heck, the Leafs are a big reason why he's at 800. Not to end the video on that note, like, I don't want to take away Caps fans if you're watching this from enjoying that win. You should enjoy that win. And when Ovechkin scores 801 and 802 and 895 and 900 probably at the end of all that, I'm not saying you can't celebrate. I mean, I'm going to celebrate as a as a hockey artifact. Like, I, I can't ignore the accomplishment. But I definitely can't ignore the elephant in the room. And it's maybe about time we start talking about that a little bit more, yeah? What do you think? Have at the comment section down below. But for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Have a good week.